Hello to all my day drinkers out there. I'm Martini Pictures, and today we'll be playing Agatha Christie's The ABC Murders. Now, from what I know, this game is an episodical series, so we'll be uh, discovering uh, murders that happen in different locations, as well as different victims to discover who the uh, perpetrator is. Who we'll be playing as is Hercule Poirot, the detective in London, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on this because uh, this is just going to be my first time playing it. And uh, let's d dive right in, shall we? Some post for you, Poirot. Mr. Hercule Poirot, you fancy yourself, don't you, at solving mysteries that are too difficult for our poor thick-head British police? Let us see, Mr. Clever Poirot, just how clever you can be. Perhaps you'll find this nut too hard to crack. Look out for Endover on the 21st of the month. Yours extra, A, B, C. Oh, it's some sort of joke. Maybe, but please remind me to inform Chief Inspector Jap. That's more of a declaration of war <laughs> than anything else. Oh, we're skipping ahead to the 21st. <laughs> Let's get started, shall we? Who's this block? Alright, okay, so that cover had something about the ABCs. You know what, I have yet to ever write on just a simple train. I've always just ridden on uh, uh, those uh, monorails over at uh, it's Disney World. Baro, the just place in this street. Grim place indeed. To the you know, I'm just gonna let them talk. The of are in a terrible state. Look, there's Chief Inspector Jack. He's talking with a policeman. Let us try not to get our shoes wet. Am I missing a joke? about getting shoes wet. For all you Brits out there, please explain that to me uh, down in the comments. <laughs> well, let's just get on to meeting Jap. Over here, it's Hastings and Poirot. You missed the nine o'clock train? We took the half past ten. Luckily, the service is good to Andover. So, Chief Inspector, what do we have? The victim is called Alice Asher. She owned this tobacco shop. Alice, Asher, and Andover? Mm -hmm. Let me just check. Take advantages of the moments when the person you are with is busy in order to observe him or her. Okay. I'm not much of a conversationalist, so let's just uh, look him over once, shall we? Find three clues that agree with Hercules, Hercule Poirot's remark. Is Jap being too relaxed? Let us find the clues that prove it. Okay, so it looks like I'm just looking for stuff that would point out that he's super relaxed. Oh, last one. Jap is in a good mood. I bet he thinks he's already called the culprit. But wait, aren't we the detective? The last customer to see Mrs. Asher alive left her shop at half past five. 
The body was found at around 11 in the evening by an officer doing his rounds. The shop door was open. That's what alerted him. Had anything been taken? A little tobacco, maybe, but you'd hardly murder for a few smokes. There's nothing of any real value in the shop. What type of woman was Miss Zatcher? Her fifties. Married, but separated. No children. Okay. A husband? Aha, Franz Usher, the husband. Alcoholic and violent. Ooh. It's said that he regularly insulted his wife and threatened to kill her. Ugh. Once again, not really a conversationalist, so... I was too quick to jump to conclusions. That's just... I'm saying it's too obvious for the husband to kill her right away. A little too easy, don't you think? You like complications, don't you? Well, this time you may be disappointed. But that. May I examine the crime scene? Of course, old chap. I'll be with you in a minute, Poirot. Chap isn't in a good mood. I bet he thinks he's already... Okay, so we heard that already. Okay, let's uh, just head inside the store, I guess. Okay. No. Let's just look at the newspaper. The place is unusually tidy for a crime scene. What? Oh. Yeah, so I guess there was no struggle. Oh, there was some. Something over here. Oh, there's something. I just said that. No struggle. Yeah. Nothing suggests any sign of a fight. Okay. Right. Before we get onto the body, let's look at everything else. Hopefully, do no. I know that goes out there. So. Objectives hide secrets behind complex mechanism. It is up to you to decipher them in the order and. Okay, so what I have to do is just go through certain objects and then run my way through them. Okay, seems easy enough. The teal does not appear to have been touched. I have to check that nothing is missing from it. Something is preventing the drawer from opening. Okay. Maybe I have to look around it for some more. What? Ah, a mechanism has just made a fan click. Okay. Uh, there's also a five here. That will probably come later. Oh, wait. That's an eight. Okay. The teal is full of money. There we go. Oh. There is something strange. This uh, placard. So, the, eight, the numbers were eight, five, and two. Something is eaten underneath. You know what, let's, let's go back to the top view and maybe if we put it in here. Eight, five, two. Aha! This must be the key to the back of the shop. Oh, more stuff to look at. Okay, so there's that book that we saw earlier. Observe. Okay, yep. It's not just any railway guide. It's an ABC. Hmm. 
It's open at the letter A. There are no prints on the Super board. on the nose, don't you think? <laughs> bag of blood, bag of blood, bag of blood. Red liquid is oozing out. Is it blood? No. It's just some strawberries that are losing their juice. <laughs> Probably come from the fruit and vegetable shop opposite. Okay, so there was. Ooh, that's a lot of handprints. Let's dive into it. The counter is covered with fingerprints all on top of one another. Unfortunately, it will not be possible to use them. Hmm, too many. <sighs> All right, last stop before we go in the back, anyway. She just has one wound on the back of the head. There are no other wounds or signs of the struggle. Mm. This poor woman's head is resting in a very even shaped pool of blood. Even shaped head, but I can't see any other mark on the floor. Hmm. The body is hidden by the counter and is not visible from the tobacco shop store. Many customers might have thought that Mrs. Asher had popped out. Okay, so nobody was able to see her after she was killed. Where's the oh? She has a packet of play cigarette next to her hand. Did she drop it when she fell? Hmm. Oh, uh, the new objective. Um. Inspect the crime scene. I just did that. Okay, so here's the first victim, Alice Asher, in Andover. All right. Okay, so this is uh, certain cl uh, questions that we have to figure out with the clues that we're given. The door is locked. Okay. Oh, here we are. So over in the corner you get ego points. Looking into a mirror, great. That's this thing. What a strange box. It looks like you have to slide the slats of wood to open it. Oh god, this is one of those puzzle boxes. So we'll go down here because we know that this part is unblocked. This button appears to activate the mechanism. All right. Was quick. Oh, no, I didn't mean to. Ugh. It must be on that far side. Yup. <sighs> 
still not open yet. This is a long puzzle. That should do it. Okay. Oh, it slides this way, okay. A necklace of bright blue stones. Hmm. Who is this young woman? To my dear Aunt Alice, married Howard. Hmm. Have you found anything? The victim has a niece. We must find out. I don't know about you guys, but I'd feel awful finding out that my aunt has just passed. Yeesh. Especially by murders? Ugh. Wait, wasn't she killed in the other room? Why is there blood in here? Blood. Did Alice Asher suffer from nosebleeds? Um. An inscription in German. Souvenir of our honeymoon in the Black Forest. To my Alice forever, Franz Asher. Mm. The Ashers were a lovely couple when they were young. And then, uh... I guess the pig got too involved. You know, I can already tell it's another one of those puzzle things. This interior is very simple. This is Asher lived very simply. I mean, simple but happy. What can you ask more for? We are not looking back at ourselves again in the mirror. Is there anything left? Such a pretty decoration should be at the center of the motif to respect the symmetry. The wooden flower is preventing the circle from turning. Hmm. Okay, so a better idea of mo than moving this around and then trying to get it to here is trying to align a path and then getting this to the path. Okay, we definitely know that's out. And we can... The wooden flower is preventing the circle from turning. We may have just found it, boys. Yes! There we go. As if something wasn't locked. Hmm. It is blocked. There's more. After all of that, ugh. Why do these turn? Oh my God! I have to match these. Okay, so the robin's beak is facing that way, or whatever that bird is. These drawings appear to be attached to the chest of drawers. They won't move.
These drawings appear to be attached. Okay, Poirot, I got it. Oh, that one's right. Okay. Hopefully this is the last bird. Hey, look at that. Everything magically just made its way here. And now we have it unlocked. From Mr. Adam Flint, Royal Bank, Eastfield Road, Andover, to Mrs. Alice Asher, 5 Bishops Road, Andover. Dear Mrs. Asher, further to your request of 12 February 1935, I have informed my superiors of your wish to apply for a loan to acquire the lease of the shop you rent from Mr. Fairfax. Mr. Fairfax. Despite the seriousness of your case, I regret to inform you that your request has been denied. The amount of your personal contribution, 11 pounds, is not high enough and represents too small a part of the final transaction. Mm. I remain at your disposal for any questions. Adam Flint. Mrs. Asher's meager savings were not enough for her to own the tobacco shop. Oh. will largely cover her funeral costs. Mm -hmm. Medicine. Laudanum based cough medicine, Mrs. Hasher, and Dover Mori Laboratory, London. It's strange hmm. to find such an elaborate medicine from a leading London laboratory in the home of such a modest woman. Well, that's everything that we can observe, I think. Let's go out. I'll be with you in a minute, Poirot. Okay. You know what? Let's look at the objectives. Inspect the I do. <laughs> Mary Trower. So there's more that we missed. There are cigarettes packets in a mess on the shelf. <laughs> so, Paro, any news? So, an APC guide with no fingerprints, but prints all over the counter. Normally, the tobacco shop does not sell ABC guides. Exactly. Mon ami, could you have a word with the neighbors? Some may have seen something. Of course, my friend, I'll do it straight away. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay, so right there it said gray cells, and what he said was brain cells, so I'm thinking he meant brain is in gray matter. Okay, so this is the part where we have to place all the clues and how they would present themselves in an actual murder. All right. Is theft the motive for the crime? No railway guide for sale in the tobacco shop. The till is untouched and full of money. Yeah, so there was no theft involved at all. No objects about... Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, there, there was no theft at all. The motive is definitely not financial gain. There is no sign of a struggle, and the till has not been forced or emptied. I think I've looked everywhere here. Let us see if I can find any more information in the shop's surroundings. Inspect the tobacco shop's surroundings. 
Okay, so we have to look outside then. Four pence of letters, a lovely lot of letters, four pence only. Oh, she didn't sound too enthused. Strawberries, six pence a pound. Strawberries, okay, so we saw that earlier. Let's take a look, not a conversation. This woman appears to be a smoker. Y'all, look at that. Right there. Cigarette. Distinguished. Oh. Look at that. Ashtray. Um. Oh, here's the package, I guess. Oh, it matches. She's a big smoker. She must have been a customer at the tobacco shop. Hmm. Let's have a chat. Ask the price of lettuce. Ask what her relationship was with the victim. Say that the strawberries are not fresh. No, we want we want her happy. Price of lettuce. How much are your lettuce, please? A lettuce? That'll be five pence, kind sir. Okay, good. The accuser were lying about the price. Ask the price of two lettuces. And what if I take two? Well, two are ten pence, so what do you want? Nothing, thank you. They do not look very fresh. Did you know Alice Asher well? And for starters, who are you? I'm Hercule Poirot, active. You're foreign, that's for sure, with your accent and your odd way about you. And you're here about Alice's murder, I suppose. Well, I've nothing to say to you. Did you speak to the victim yesterday? No, I never saw her. Accuse her of making fun of you. Ask Nicey to cooperate. Once again, we want her nice. So, please try and help me, madame. Why should I help you? For your beautiful moustache. <laughs> Come on, move along now. You're scaring away my customers. Please do not be ridiculous. Say so that the victim came to see her. Say that she went to the tobacco shop. Accuse her of lying. Okay, because of the strawberries, we know that she went in there. I know that you went to the tobacco shop yesterday. Well? Remind her of her duty to tell the truth, accuse her of murder. No, never do that. It is your duty to tell me if you saw something unusual. Who do you think you are telling me what to do? Get away from my stall! Okay, sheesh. Hey, Poirot, is the greengrocer causing trouble? I'll sort her out. No, please, leave her, Chief Inspector. I'll get her to talk later. <laughs> I found the victim's niece. She's waiting for you in the back of the shop. Thank you, Monami. I'll question her. Okay. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. I guess we're answering another question. Was Mrs. Asher killed on sight? Seen alive at 5.30 p.m. No other marks on the floor. Body was found at 11 p.m. Okay, we know that she was here at that time and she was... Her body was at least found there. But that's not the case, I guess. So. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Asher was killed here. The absence of marks in the shop and the regular shape of blood stains indicated beyond a doubt. Okay. Question Mary Drower. Okay, before we do that, I did see that we could look at something else over here. There we are. A bottle of poor quality vinegar. The smell could awaken the dead. Hmm. Anything else? Nope, okay. I guess we'll be on our way then. Ooh. 
Ooh, somebody's crying. Jap oh, hey, David. Removed out oh. of respect for the victim's niece. His attention is commendable. I was just about to say they removed the body, but... To be nice to her, yeah. <laughs> I'd just be glad. Hmm. You know what? Let's look. Let's stand over here. And we'll look off to the side with our sly eye. Is that grief sincere? She's gotta be crying. Yep. Oh, that's not what I was looking at. I was looking at her lip as if she was making sound. She appears to be very upset. Okay, grieving. As in mourning, she looks for Jaya. Wait, why would we inspect her again? I finished with this subject. Oh. Once again, we want her happy. You were very fond of your aunt, am I right? She was the only family I had since my mother died. Hmm. Ask her if her aunt had children. Okay, we know that she didn't have any. If you are her only relative, you will be the only one we know it. Sir, my aunt was poor. And in any case, I'm not interested in any legacy. <laughs> Hmm. My apologies. I see that you mean what you say. <laughs> Ask if Alice was afraid of her husband. Ask if she ever thought the husband would go through with his threats. Hmm. They both sound... You know what? Let's go square. Was your aunt afraid of her husband? He shouted a lot, but she wasn't afraid of him. Why, he used to slink away when she turned on him. He was afraid of her, if you like. He was afraid of her. Did your aunt enjoy good airs? She had a bad throat. Mm. And she was well cared for by a doctor in London. Mm. Does Franz Asher work? All he's done for years is drink and gamble, but he used to be a very good cabinet maker. Where does he live on? My aunt used to give him five shillings a week. Ask if Aunt had a reason to help her husband. Hmm. Why did she support such a good for nothing? He was a husband. She couldn't leave him with nothing. Yeah. I understand. You have been of great assistance, mademoiselle. Please take this young lady home. My pleasure. Well, this Franz Asher does not seem to be quite so dangerous as Jack said. And since Alice Asher getting money regularly, it was not in its interest to kill her. Hmm. Take a look outside. Oh. We have to wait for him to sleep it off. He's all yours, Poro. There are a few things I need to check. That must be some way of sobering him up. I wonder what his wife used to do. He must have scared the customers away. <laughs> Okay, that's what that vinegar was for, to wake up the dead. Let's go check, check him out. Strawberries! Six bits a pound! Okay, we're not involving ourselves with that anymore. A bottle of poor quality vinegar. The smell could awaken the dead. You know what, let's ask her for it. 
Uh, you again? I've nothing to say. Look at what frames dropped. Really? Did I miss that at the top then? A book. It's Ali Sasha's notebook. Ah, that's interesting. It probably contains information about our possible debtors and creditors. <laughs> Bodley. The fruit seller has debts too. She will probably be more cooperative thanks to this piece of information. Mm -hmm. Reed Rauer was telling the truth. Mrs. Asher regularly gave money to her alcoholic husband. Good for nothing. A box of new stockings. Man, not really important, I don't think. Find a way to sober up friends. Now we can get that vinegar. <laughs> A bottle of poor quality dinner. I guess we'll just ask for it. Accuse her of selling rotten fruit. Accuse her of... No. Just fruit. Your fruit is rotten. What? A foreigner dares to say that? According to the victim's account book, you owed her ten pounds for tobacco and magazines. That's a lie. She owed me one pound. I swear. Accuser of lying, ask for more explanations. Explanations? Now, it's so kind as to explain this. Look at my account book. Alice owed me 11 pounds for fruit and vegetables. I may have had a slate at her shop, but she had one at mine. She owed me one pound. And that reminds me I have to get it back from her niece. That is quite enough. Your account book has saved you. But I might ask Chief Inspector Jack to throw you in the cells for one or two nights while he checks your entries. You want to go to prison? Prison? Now that's not fair. I haven't done nothing. In that case, I am counting on your full collaboration. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Listen, I didn't kill Alice. I swear to that I did go to the shop yesterday. Sorry about that. What time? Six o'clock. She left me a note saying she wanted some strawberries if I got some. I received them late, about six. So I took them over to her. But you did not see her. She wasn't in the shop, so I just put the strawberries on the counter and left. Accuse her of theft, ask if she was armed. But she saw in the tobacco shop. Yeah, did she see anything? Did you see anything unusual in the shop? No. Well, maybe one thing. There was always a railway guide on the counter. Alice didn't sell them. Maybe it's the customer who left it there. <laughs> you were not around? I thought Alice had just gone to get her medicine from her room and that she'd be straight back. You mentioned medicine. Something for her cough. She used to take it a lot. Who do you think killed her? France. Her scoundrel of her husband. He was Ooh. always after her for something. Well, he's a foreigner. Uh, sorry, sir. What I mean is he's German. That's even worse. What does that have to Did do you with anything? Did you see enter the tobacco shop late yesterday afternoon? Well, no. But at that time of the day, the streets are packed. And I have better things to do than watch her shop. Okay, so we'll get going on to the other side. Ah, oh, we never picked up the... <clears throat> Priority is to question Asha. He's not in any condition to be questioned. I have to find a way to sober him up. The priority is to question Asha. Alright, fine. I'll just go get the vinegar. Strawberries! Expense a pound! Wait, when 
not be bothering with that anymore. I'll just borrow your button a bit. Take it. It's what Alice used to sew up her husband. But try not to empty the bottle. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. Oh, why now? We need. Can we establish the time range during which Miss Asher was killed? Fruit Seller did not see anybody in the shop at 6. The body was found at 11 p.m. Miss Asher was seen alive at 5. Okay, so I would change that. signed ABC announcing the end of a murder. Can we deduce this time range and why? Yeah. Alice was killed between 5.30 and 6. Yeah. Alright. Let's go awake. That idiot up. Is not in any condition to be questioned. Yeah, right. Let's use yeah. There we go. Ready to use it, not just Mes amis, I can say without a doubt that poor Mrs. Asher was killed between half past five and six. Killed when the street was packed with people. That's rather bold. <laughs> I've been talking to the neighbors and... No one's seen anything? Or rather it's anything and everything. Am I wrong? No. Yeah. <laughs> we must grill this villain Asher before he falls asleep again. Okay, let's, now we can start observing him. This man is in rather a bad state. He's got a black eye, his clothes are dirty, and he's got a bloody lip. Bar fight, I'm guessing, if he's an alcoholic. Oof, ripped shoulder, I didn't even notice that. This man has been fighting, and he smells of alcohol. Bar fight. Offer a cigarette, ask what he was doing yesterday evening, accuse him of threat, of having threatened his wife. Offer a, cig offer a cigarette because it's every it's everywhere in this tobacco shop. Care for a cigarette, monsieur. What's that? Scented cigarettes? No thanks. Hmm. Bien. I was trying to be friendly, but you are quite right. Let us get down to business. You threatened to kill your wife, and now she's dead. So what? You shouldn't take things so seriously, sir. Nothing but empty threats. We didn't get on all that badly. So, if things were going so well with hmm. your wife, why did you not live with her? She was the one that left. Nothing to do with me, sir. Ask if his wife had a lover, accuse him of ill-threatening his wife. Hmm. Lover, just in case. Ah, women are flighty critters. Did she run away with another man? Flighty? You talk funny. One thing for sure, if my wife was seeing another man, I'd give her a good beating. Interesting. And... What were you doing yesterday at the end of the afternoon? Hmm. Ask Bolelli to cooperate. Accuse him of drunkenness. You know what? This guy's got too many threats up his sleeve, so 
drunk than you. You had been drinking again. <laughs> the occasional slap, sir. That's all. And you cannot even remember how you read the coat? I got it stuck in the door. Accuse him of fighting. Make fun of him being beaten up. Real, real fun. Asha, look me in the eye and tell me that you were in a fight. I'm looking. I'm looking. No, I wasn't in a fight. You are right. Looking at the state of you, you did not defend yourself. So someone gave you a good beating. A beating? No way. All right, he tore my coat and gave me a black eye. You see the state of him. A very interesting. Who is the other that you struck? Probably best if I tell you everything. Yesterday afternoon, I met Roderick Tanner. We'd bet on a dog fight together. An illegal bet, naturally. Yes, sir. Our dog won. Roderick got the money, but he refused to give me my share. And you thought about it. What time was this? In the evening, about six, I think. We were on the other side of town. You see, I couldn't have killed my wife. <laughs> Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay, so he has an alibi of not being able. What was Mrs. Asher doing when she was killed? Packets in a muddle on the shelf. Cigarette packet near the victim's hand. No objects of value for sale. She had just one wound at the back of her head. Maybe, yeah. She was taking a packet of cigarettes. Yep. Mm -hmm. The murderer probably pretended to be a customer. He hit the shopkeeper from behind as she turned around to serve him. Mm. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Mm. More questions. Yay! How do we explain the presence of an ABC guide on the counter? No. Letter signed ABC announcing the end over murder. The threat that we get. No, I didn't see. Yeah, there was no guides to be sold there. Someone placed it. Mm-hmm. Murderer deliberately left behind this ABC as a signature. The absence of fingerprints and the fact that it is open at letter A or Endover leaves little doubt. Asher's alibi appears to be confirmed. All the same, I'm going to call and check that he did have a fight with this Tanner on the afternoon of the murder. You can never trust this sort of chap. One thing is certain, Asher was a ruffian who used to beat his wife. But he is not very educated. It certainly was not him who wrote the letter signed ABC. Let's resume these things. We know the murderer pretended to be a customer. He did not kill her for money, but appears to be certain. Hm. I agree with you on that point. And the murderer left an ABC guide as a signature. Therefore, it's likely he wrote the letter. Indeed, but that doesn't explain why and how he did it. You are quite right. Why he did it is a mystery. But as for how he did it, we do know enough to try and reconstruct the events. Reconstruct the crime's course of events by selecting the actions that the killer may have executed. Ooh. Reconstruction. Ooh, we get to play it as if it's the like a simulator. Enters the shop. Advance, attack, no. Mrs. She hasn't even touched the stuff yet. A customer. Mm -hmm. Ask for attack. Still no cigarettes. The murderer asks her for some tobacco. She turns her back to him. He seizes the opportunity to strike her. Not face up, it was face down. He then places the ABC upside down before leaving. Everything appears to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Hm. 
Asher has a strong alibi and we don't have any other suspect. But what was the point of this crime? Hmm. She had no debts. She gave Franz Asher money regularly. She was an old money. Nobody stood to gain anything. <laughs> no doubt about it. The murderer is insane. Hmm. And I fear that we had not heard the last of him. I hope you're wrong for once. Yeah, let's go back to London. If we hurry, we should catch the two past seven train. Are you coming? Two past no, seven. Unfortunately, <laughs> I have to talk with Andover police. See you soon, then. Are you coming, Hastings? Let's go home. There's nothing for us here. Well, do you have any idea about the killer's identity? Hmm. The crime was committed by a man of medium height, with red hair and suspicious eyes. He has a slight limp on the right foot, and a wart just below his shoulder blade. <laughs> Poirot! <laughs> Mon ami, what do you want? You fix upon me a look of dog-like devotion and demand of me a pronouncement a la Sherlock Holmes. Now for the truth. I Sherlock. don't know what the murderer looks like, nor where he lives, nor how to set hands upon him. What shall we do, then? Nothing. Nothing? Do not be so impatient, Estines. The killer will manifest himself soon enough. I thought I heard the postman. Maybe there's some news. I will go and see. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all the time that I have for today. Uh, this actually ran way longer than what I wanted it to. Um, but yeah, uh, we're just diving right into the first uh, victim. Uh, Alice Asher in Andover said to say that she had to be killed and for no reason. I think by the end of this, uh, by the third murder in the ABCs, from what we can tell, um, we'll finally have figured out who the perpetrator is. But I mean, it's also creepy, right? Like, why would somebody kill someone else for no apparent reason? If you're looking forward to this as much as I am, come check out the next video. If you like this, please hit that like button below. Leave any comments for what you want in the next video. Cheers.